What? I need to pee so bad. Oh, for sure. Well, we got an hour and 14 minutes. I can't wait an hour and 14 minutes. Good morning, my name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron and this is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel. I want to thank you for joining me on today's video. If you recall, back in December, I took my family up to a trip up to the Napa Valley, and I've actually posted a video of my son and I flying from Napa to Reno. On the way up to Napa Valley, uh, we had a little learning experience that I want to share with you folks here today. On today's flight, I learned some valuable lessons about diverting from your flight plan to an alternate airport. Now, there are all kinds of reasons why you might actually divert from your destination to an alternate airport along the way. Perhaps you've had an engine failure of some sort or some kind of engine issue that requires you to land. Perhaps you're low on fuel. Perhaps you've had a major medical emergency with a passenger or even the pilot that requires you to get somewhere quickly. On today's flight, our quote-unquote emergency was not really an emergency at all. We, somebody needed to have a bathroom break. So we could be rather leisurely along the way, but that might not be the case the next time. So so on today's flight, you'll see that I got where I needed to be, but it took a little longer and it was a little less smooth than I'd like. So I'd like to break down that whole process You're and we'll start by trying to figure out where the nearest airports are. Robles. In my series, I've got a couple different ways to figure that out. The simplest way is to hit the nearest button on the PFD. Another option is to use the ForeFlight app on my iPad. In this scenario, I'm going to use the nearest function on the PFD to get me the information I need. The Perspective Plus system is going to present me with a number of options based on how close they are to my current location. And if you look closely here, you can see that all of my options are within about 30 miles-ish of the airplane. And while proximity is certainly one of the most important elements of choosing an airport, it's not the only one. You'll also need to consider things like direction and bearing to that airport, the runway length at that airport, its elevation, the availability of approaches, the relative terrain, and importantly, the weather as well. All of those elements will have an impact on what winds up being the best airport for you to divert to. So with all that in mind, I'm going to start that selection process with Paso Robles. Weather, Paso Robles. I felt comfortable with Paso Robles because I've flown there a million times and I'm familiar with the airport and the terrain. I'm low IFR, I can't land in Paso Robles. But as it turns out, Paso Robles fails the weather test, so I keep looking. This time on my iPad, and I decide that Fresno looks like a good bet. Oakland Center, Sierra 768, Fox Rod Sierra. I'd like to change my flight plan. Who's requesting to change their flight plan? Uh, this is Sierra 768 Foxtrot Sierra. I need to uh, divert to uh, Fresno. 768 Foxtrot Sierra, you need to divert to where? To uh, Fresno, K uh, Kilo Foxtrot Alpha Tango. Hey Foxtrot Sierra, Roger, clear to the Fresno airport via Clovis Direct and say reason for change of destination. Uh, cleared uh, direct uh, via Clovis. Uh, I've got a passenger that needs to go to the bathroom. Hey, Fox Sierra, Roger. Clovis Direct to maintain 10,000. Clovis Direct, maintain 10,000. Hey, Fox Sierra. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here for a second and give you a little cockpit confession. This little sequence you're about to see here, I was tempted to edit out of the video so I didn't look so lame, but it also provides an important lesson which I'm going to share with you after we get done. But just for yucks, let's note the time and see how long this whole sequence takes to unfold. Now this should have been a lot simpler than I made it, direct Clovis. But when you're flying a cross-country flight plan, sometimes you're going to get into areas and come up against waypoints that you're not quite familiar with. Now the truth is, at some point I've flown to Clovis before, perhaps on a trip to Lake Tahoe, and I knew it had a kooky spelling, but I wasn't quite sure what. So I decided to start guessing. And as you can see right here, that's not working out very well. So now I grab my iPad and decide to look around for Clovis on the map. Now, in retrospect, grabbing the iPad and looking at ForeFlight wasn't a bad idea, but there's a better way. Instead of poking around on the map, I could have just gone up into that search window, typed in Clovis, and find the correct identifier. Had this been a time-critical situation, you can see I've wasted a ton of time here. And that's the lesson here. If you don't know, ask. Those ATC folks are there to help you, so use them.
And finally, after what seems like the longest one minute ever, I'm off to Clovis. That's the good news. The bad news is that from the time I decided to make that diversion to the time I actually got headed in that direction was nearly five minutes, and that's just way too long. Okay, now that I'm headed direct to Clovis, I now have to change my flight plan to reflect the changes and to set us up for an approach to Fresno. To do that, I'm going to delete my previous flight plan and enter CZQ Clovis as my initial waypoint and then enter Kilo Foxtrot Alpha Tango for Fresno as my destination. But once again, even though I got it all done in the end, it took me about a minute to do it and that's just way too long. Oakland Center, 8 Foxtrot Sierra, I'm heading direct uh, Clovis now, 10,000. 8 Foxtrot Sierra, roger. Now that everything's programmed, I'm going to start briefing our approach to Fresno. November 8, Foxtrot Sierra, descend and maintain 9,000. Descend and maintain 9,000, 8, Foxtrot Sierra. Okay, I'm going to stop the video again for just a second to talk about another important lesson I learned on today's flight. And that's this. It's more important when you're flying an airplane to be a pilot than a parent. The pilot of this airplane was instructed by ATC to descend to 9,000 feet. And the pilot of this plane entered that 9,000 into altitude select as you should. But then the pilot got distracted by the parent and forgot to put the vertical speed in and get the plane descending. Matt, are you on the radio? Matt, on the radio. Yeah. Put your headset on, Matt, so I can talk to you. Huh? Are, are you on the headset? Okay, we're going to Fresno. It's going to take us about 20, 15 minutes here. All right. Now, there's nothing I love more than flying with my family members, but today I learned another valuable lesson. Don't let family or friends be a distraction. My job is to be a pilot. I'll be a parent when I get on the ground. Okay, back to business. I've got some free time, so I'm going to load the frequencies for the Fresno airport into the comm. And now I'm going to start monitoring the ADIS to get the weather at Fresno. Observation wind comm, visibility 5, mist, few clouds at 200, 4,000 scatter, temperature 70.6, altimeter 301. I'm going to turn on right Alice Pro-Chain. Most of the time, I'm going to turn on right Pappy is out of service. Both patrol one of the four all staff to San Francisco, just to Los Angeles, San Diego, Seattle, Phoenix, Salt Lake City. Now, patrol one clearance with the combined use one to 1.7. All aircraft advised, honest contact, information whiskey. Okay, so now we have our weather at Fresno. The winds are calm. We've got some mist down low, some broken clouds or scattered clouds at 4,000. And we're landing on runway 29 right, and the ILS approaches are in use. With that information in hand, I can now start to brief the approach for the ILS 29 right. And when I'm briefing that approach, I like to make sure I have all the key information written down on my flight info sheet information like the frequency, the approach course, the minimums and the key waypoints and final approach fix. And as I'm briefing the approach, you'll notice here that I finally realize that I've got my altitude selected 9,000, but I've not started our descent, so I dial that in right now and fix that little issue. Fox Trot Sierra, change to my frequency 123.8. Fox Trot Sierra. Oakland Center, Mitsubishi 324 Golf Mike with you through 2200 and we're in via park conditions, we'll cancel. Before golf, Oakland Center 8, Fox Rats here on 123.8. Fresno. Now that I've got the approach briefed, it's time to load it into the flight plan, select the transition, enter the minimums, and off we go. San Diego, Seattle, Oakland Center, Sierra 768, Fox Rats here, level 9000. Left, uh, Bravo Roger, 10, uh, contact uh, Fresno approach on 119er, correction, 132.35, 3235. 3235, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. Fresno approach, Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, level 9000. Sierra 768, Foxtrot Sierra, Fresno approach, Fresno altimeter 3008. 3008 for Fresno. 8 Sierra. Bonanza, correction, Cirrus, 8 Fox Shots here. Advise when you have information, whiskey for Fresno. Fly heading 080. This will be a vector to final approach course. Expect the ILS Yankee runway 2 down the right approach. Okay, uh, I got whiskey. We're going to fly heading 080 and expect the ILS 29 or right 8 Fox Shots here. All right, now we're heading into the home stretch. ATC has given me a vector to the final approach course, so now I'll dial in a 080 heading and switch from GPS to heading mode. 
Now at this point I've only loaded the approach, I've not activated it. On this approach, activating vectors to final would be the proper way to do it. But I've been burned in the past by activating vectors to final too soon, so I'm going to hold on for a minute and get it a bit later in the flight. If I have to choose between a GPS and ILS approach, I always go GPS, but today I've got an ILS approach. So I'm checking the frequency to make sure I've got everything set. I'm confirming my minimums and briefing the final approach course. Cirrus 8 Foxtrot Sierra, this is maintained 7,000. This is maintained 7,000, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. Cirrus 8 Foxtrot Sierra, turn left heading 050, to and maintain 5,000. 050, descent, maintain 5,000, 85 jets here. Bonanza 6 Yankee Mike, climb maintain 10,000. 36 Yankee Mike, clear to 10,000. Attention aircraft information, x ray is now current for Fresno, wind 130 at 5, visibility 9er, 2500 scattered, ceiling 20000 broken, temperature 9er, 2.6, altimeter 3008. ILS Yankee, runway 29 right approach in use, line departing 29 right to LF. Okay, we've got some clouds down low here, 130, wind at 5, so we're landing 29 or right. We got winds coming from dead behind us, alright. Sierra 8, Foxtrot Sierra, turn left heading 080, descend and maintain 3000. Left 080, right 080. And correction, Sierra 8, Foxtrot Sierra, thank you. Turn right heading 080, right turn 080, descend and maintain 3000. Right 080, descend and maintain 3000, 8, Foxtrot Sierra. That little exchange right there is a gentle reminder that even controllers make a mistake. So uh, when you're looking at headings and so forth, best for the pilot to actually have an idea of where he's going first and uh, to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Go to descent. Stand to 36 Yankee Mike, contact Oakland Center, 123.8. Have a great day. 123.8 for 36 Yankee Mike, check. thank you. Power lever's good. Brake pressure, good. Landing checklist, okay, you got your seat belt on, fuel pumps and boost. Okay, our descent and landing checklists are complete. Now we can focus on just getting that approach right. Clear state Fox shots here, descent maintain 2000. Descent maintain 2,000, 8 buck dots here. Now as you can see here, we're paralleling the final approach course, so we're about ready to get turned to final. Uh, in that scenario, it's now time for me to get ready to set that approach, and I'm going to do it by activating vectors to final. And once I do that, the needles turns from GPS to localizer, and the scoreboard changes from direct Clovis to vectors to final story final approach fix. Like Bonanza 30 yeah. kilo negative, yeah. oh, everything's fine. Thank you. Sierra State of Oxford, Sierra, turn left heading 020. Left 020, 8 Fox Trot Sierra. Now as you look at the map page on the MFD, you can see the plane is headed directly toward the final approach course. We're still in heading mode, but I'm going to switch to nav right now, which puts localizer and standby. Once the plane intercepts the final approach course, the localizer will take over and the plane will turn onto the final approach course. Sierra 
Fox, that's the air. Five miles from Story, turn left heading 320. Maintain 2000 until established in the localizer. Clear to ILS Yankee, runway 29 at right approach. Uh, 320, maintain 2000 until established. Clear for the uh, ILS approach, 8 Fox, that's the air. Now that we have our clearance, I'm going to arm the approach. And I'll confirm all that by looking up at the scoreboard, which shows that our altitude is selected at 2000 and the glide slope is armed and ready to go. And now that we're on course, I'm going to put in our first level of flaps to make sure that we slow down and hit that final approach fix at 100 knots. Cessna Bonanza 30 Kilo will start a descent for the air coming. So departure, King Air 396 Alpha Foxtrot, 2400, climbing 9000. King Air 396 Alpha Foxtrot, Fresno Sierra, 8 Foxtrot, Sierra, contact tower, 118.2, have a good day. 118.2, 8 Foxtrot, Sierra, thanks for your help. Fresno Tower, Sierra 768 Foxtrot, Sierra, inbound for the ILS 29 right. 276 8 Foxtrot, Sierra, Fresno Tower, runway 29 right, clear two lanes. 29 right, clear land, 8 Fox shots here. We're 2.8 miles from the final approach fix, so I set my altitude select to 1800 so I can capture the glide slope. Eight tenths okay. of a mile from our final approach fix, we reach our altitude select of 1800. And then 20 seconds later, we reach our final approach fix and capture the glide slope and autopilot takes over. What a beautiful thing. Okay, we got the glide slope. Final approach fix 100. Okay, we can break it through. All right. three miles from the runway. We're on course. Our power setting is right where it needs to be. We're on the glide slope and our nose is pointing at the front of the runway. Bravo four, bravo six. I confirm the taxiways I'll exit on and then add 100% flaps to slow me down for the final approach. Ten. From here, all that's left to do is just land this plane nice and smooth. If I've learned anything in my short career as a pilot, it's that every flight is a learning experience. Every flight is different. There's always something that you could do better, do a little bit more efficiently, and that's really the challenge of learning to fly. And this flight was no different. Today I learned some valuable lessons, and I hope you did as well. If you like what you see here on the channel and on this particular video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of things as they happen, just ring that bell. It's been fun having you along on the flight today. My name is Steve Rennie. I am the Wren Baron, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Autopilot off. Approach.
Fox up here, turn left at Bravo 6, Crossway turn left, at the ground on the other side. 